Director, thanks so much for coming in today. You know, we really do appreciate it. It's great to be here. Another uh, mass shooting in this country, and as we speak, there is a shooting in Colorado today as well. Uh, as ATF director, how would you characterize gun violence in this country? Just, just how bad is it? So, uh, look, as a, as a matter of just looking at the bigger picture, uh, the amount and the nature of gun violence in the United States is wholly unacceptable. Um, if you look at sort of the short-term trends, actually 2023 was a year where there were significant reductions in gun violence. But I don't think that changes the basic equation that for many years in this country, we've been among Western economically development nations, really an outlier in that we have way, way more gun violence uh, than any of those other nations. I want to ask you about that. You have called uh, gun violence un-American, yet this seems to be an American problem. Why? Uh, well, I call it un-American because it's not who we are as Americans. We're a good people, right? We're a people who have always pulled together and sacrificed and tried to compromise to find solutions to difficult problems. Uh, here's an area where we, we just haven't measured up. Uh, we need to work together more. Uh, men and women at ATF, including at the, the horrible tragedy in Kansas City, right, are literally running toward the gunfire, mm -hmm. sacrificing, and I, I think as a country, we could learn a lot from those heroes and, and try to, to come together to see if we can do better for people. What is UC as the role of ATF in 2024? Uh, well, we work together with our state and local law enforcement partners uh, to try and protect the American people from violent crime. That's our role. We're the only federal agency with the sole mission of protecting people from violent crime. Uh, and so how do we do it? Uh, there's two basic parts of our, our strategy we bring to bear. Number one is partnerships. So we are better than anybody at working side by side with state and local law enforcement, with cops, with uh, sheriffs, with uh, state troopers all over the country. Uh, the second thing that we're really good at is bringing expertise and using what's called crime gun intelligence uh, as a way to bring big data and modern law enforcement techniques to try and identify shooters and get them off the street. Now, I know you have called for universal background checks and, and assault weapons bans. A gun control, obviously, a very divisive issue in, in this country, a violent issue in, in some areas. As you look at the landscape, Director, do you think there's any room for common ground there? Is it possible? So I am optimistic uh, uh, in that, one, who we are as Americans is we've always eventually hit hard problems head on. We need to do that. Uh, number two, there are glimmers of hope that we can come to uh, some agreement on progress. Uh, Congress passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act uh, just after I was sworn in as ATF director. We implemented that. President Biden has devoted significant resources to us trying to, to make sure we're doing everything with the tools Congress has given us. And, and we have been. Well, we've prosecuted uh, on over 300 defendants now for straw purchasing and firearms trafficking crimes using those new tools alone in the, in the Safer Communities Act. We have uh, uh, gotten lots of money to communities all over the country to try and do everything from help people with mental illnesses to, to interrupt uh, shooting cycles to, to try and, and uh, implement red flag laws. Uh, so, so there's a lot of, uh, of room for improvement. There's been some progress. I know ATF, you've talked about it, is one of the smaller uh, federal agencies, right? about 2,400 age agents, I believe, 5,000 people total. Do you have enough folks to do the job to the way, in the way that you'd like to do it? Uh, so look, I, I don't think if you asked any law enforcement executive in the country and they were being honest with you, uh, that they would tell you that they couldn't do more with more, and ATF is no exception. Uh, we, you're right, we have 2,500 agents to cover the entire country. Uh, let me just put that in perspective in New York City, New York City Police Department has 36,000 for that one city. I just have over 30 mm. there to deal with gun violence in New York. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why our model has to be to leverage those partnerships so that we not only bring more bodies, but more ideas and expertise to try to attack gun crime. And people are going to hear those numbers and they're going to ask that question again. They're going to say, do you have enough people, director, to do the job efficiently? Yeah, I think that the answer is, with more people, uh, we wouldn't have to say no to doing cases that we now can't do. Uh, that's just the reality. We will work with what Congress gives us, but I think the reality is uh, we uh, could certainly uh, do more to protect people with more agents. There's no doubt. Look, I go all around the country, Russ. I talk to chiefs, sheriffs, red state, blue state, mm -hmm. uh, west, east, north, south, suburban, 
rural, uh, city, they all agree on one thing. Every person says, we need more ATF agents here. Why can't you give us more? Yeah. And you say? And I say, because I don't have enough anywhere, mm -hmm. and let me see what I can do. Because we do try to say yes at, at ATF, but it, it's really a situation where you know we don't have enough people to do the job of protecting the American people from violent crime. You've talked about fundamental pillars to reducing gun violence. Can you go through that with me? Yeah, so to, yeah to me, there's sort of two pillars of any strategy to try to protect people from gun crime. One of them is you have to identify the trigger pullers, the shooters. These are, these are a very small group of people, the worst mm -hmm. of the worst, uh, who are actually uh, taking lives in our community. And most evidence shows that they, they do it repeatedly. So pillar one is you have to get those people, identify them, and get them off the streets. You have to prosecute them. Right? Pillar number two is you have to do something to cut off or slow down this free flow of crime guns to those people, right? So I'm not talking about law-abiding citizens. I'm talking about how are those criminals who the law says, who everybody agrees, shouldn't have guns, getting them every day so easily. And if you try to do one or the other, you're not going to uh, have a, enough of an impact. You got to first, you, you can't just go after the supply of guns and pretend that the shooters don't need to be dealt with. Right? You gotta have enforcement. But second, you can't just say, well, just go after the fact and arrest all the shooters and don't worry about how they're getting the guns. You gotta do both. Having said that, as you know, when the shooting happened in Kansas City, the shooting in Colorado today and other shootings, people say, oh no, not again. A lot of folks don't feel safe going no. to big events anymore. As the director of the ATF, what, what do you say to those people? I tell them that there are, you know, 5,000 employees and 2,500 agents who are risking their lives every day. You know, uh, ATF agents respond to almost every mass shooting that there is. They are running toward the gunfire, trying to protect people. That includes, by the way, being right at the middle of the, the Kansas City event. I spoke to the mayor of Kansas City uh, the other night, Mayor Lucas, and, you know, our, our teams work together on these things. Uh, but uh, we are there and sacrificing, and the men and women of ATF will continue to be there in harm's way to try to protect them. What goes through your mind? What's the first thing that goes through your mind when you hear of another shooting? Uh, I, I'm, I'm a father, right? I'm a, I'm a citizen myself. Uh, I think like everybody else, just, just horror. Uh, and then, uh, then we have to get to work. So then we're talking about the kinds of things that we, that we have to do to support our state and local law enforcement partners to, to try and uh, catch the bad guys and, and try to figure out what happened. Um, now, I will say this also, which is, you know, I worry that somehow we're getting used to this. Uh, you know, when I remember in 1999 when we had Columbine, I remember how that hit us all like a ton of bricks. Last year in this country, we had six 150 mass shootings. That's shootings where four or more people, not counting the shooter, are, are shot. 650. Mm -hmm. And we cannot get to the point in this country where something horrible happens like these events you're talking about and we just think, oh, that's just Wednesday, another day. We have to make sure that the American people don't accept it. We don't accept it at ATF, the police don't accept it, and the American people should not accept it. And that's what I talk about when I say it's un-American. It is not part of our American culture to have 650 mass shootings. It's not part of our history. It's part of our present, and we need to change it because that's what Americans do. You're a hometown town guy, uh, wel welcome home. Uh, wh how does Cleveland affect your mindset when you do your job? What, what, what is oh. growing up in Cleveland, what is being a part of this community meant to you in the way you do your job? I, it's, 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 I, when I first came into the job of director of ATF, I talked about this with all the ATF workforce, and I said, look, I'm from Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland is a place that reminds me of ATF in many ways, right? At, at ATF, uh, you know, uh, everything, uh, to quote uh, another Northeast Ohioan, nothing is given, everything is earned, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, ATF and Cleveland are not places where people are riding around with a tan in a convertible. We're working work-a-day people grinding away on a tough problem at ATF. So I think that, that ethic that I see in all the agents, all the people who work, uh, the, the, the investigators, the staff who work at ATF, I think that that's something I learned in Cleveland and it's very familiar to me. The other thing I'll say is a, as a point of pride is, you know, ATF has had many names and been in many places over the years, but uh, our, our atrium at ATF 
in Washington, D.C. is the Elliott Ness Atrium. <laughs> And uh, Elliot Ness and his band of untouchables of were treasury agents, uh, the, the forefathers of, of the modern day ATF, and that's something we're intensely proud of. How appropriate. Yeah, I mean, Director. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really right. appreciate it. Thanks.